Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying again this week, the peace of God. Isaiah 26, 3 says in the New King James, you will keep him in perfect peace. Now that perfect peace is actually in Hebrew, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Now, shalom means completeness, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, health and prosperity, peace, quietness, contentment, and tranquility. So that complete wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, you will keep him in shalom, shalom. That's total, perfect wholeness and peace. You will keep him in total peace and wholeness whose mind is stayed on you. Keep him whose mind is stayed on you. And we've talked about keeping your mind, keeping your mind stayed on him. And that also means stayed on his word. And we've talked about the battleground is in your mind. The battleground is in your mind. We talked about how Satan has sent and set up his little low level devils, those little demons of no rank to torment you. They are the ones sent to torment you and they will shoot the fiery darts of the evil one against you, which are primarily the thoughts against your mind of worry, doubt, fear, anxieties. It's also unclean, sinful thoughts, ungodly thoughts. It is also temptations to do wrong and do what you shouldn't do. It's also accusations against other people and against God in your mind. And we talked about second Corinthians 10, five, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God or against God. Against God, every thought that comes in your mind against God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, obedient to Christ. And so you have to take those thoughts captive. God has given you. That's what verse four says. The weapons we fight with are not carnal. They are not fleshly. They are not natural. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. God has given you supernatural weapons to destroy and demolish every fiery dart of the evil one to demolish every attack against your life in any way and to demolish every thought against your mind. And so God has given you divine weapons with divine power. And what is it? Number one, it's the word of God. And as you keep your mind stayed on his word, stayed on his word and on his promises and refusing to listen to or believe the lies of Satan that say that God has failed you or God isn't going to do this or to say you're never going to make it. You're never going to get out. You're never going to get all this paid for or you're never going to get healed. You'll never get better. You'll never walk again. All those are lies of Satan that contradict the word of God. They contradict God. Just like Satan went to Eve In Genesis three and said, did God say that if you eat the fruit, you'll die? She said, yes. And he said, you'll not die, but God knows when you eat it, you'll be like him. So what is he saying? He's accusing God of lying to her and not being truthful and faithful to her. And that she just needs to do this on her own. God said, don't eat it. She just needs to disobey God. And then she'll get this thing she wants. And he's accusing God to her and saying, God is unfaithful and you're never going to have what you want unless you disobey God. Only if you disobey God, can you really get what you want? That's why people steal. 
They steal because they think that they won't get it any other way. Well, that's a lie. God said he will meet your needs and satisfy your desires with good things. You can get it without stealing. You can get it without being dishonest. You can get everything you need, the healing you need, the restoration in your marriage, the restoration with your children, the good job, the finances. God has promised to take care of you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly, completely. That shalom, wholeness in every area of your life. That is his promise to you. That is God's promise to you and he keeps his word and he watches over his word to perform it. But you have to stay steadfast. Your part is believe God and your part is stay steadfast, steadfast, steadfast. And that's back to Isaiah 26, three, you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed stayed on you stay steadfast in trusting believing God believing God is good believing God's word is true and he watches over his word to perform it and believing God's word is coming to pass in your life it is being fulfilled in your life you have to believe it and you have to stay steadfast So we've been talking about faith, but we've also been talking about staying steadfast in believing God. Don't doubt. Don't quit. Don't quit. Quitters never win. Quitters never receive. Quitters never win. Quitters never receive. I want you to say that out loud with me. Quitters never win. Quitters never receive. And say, I will not quit. Say it with me now. I will not quit. Amen. You have to stay steadfast. And then it will come to pass in your life. Every promise God has made and given to you. Now we're talking about how do you receive peace? We said, first of all, it comes from God. And in Isaiah 53, 5, it says that it is included in our redemption. Jesus paid for it. The chastisement or punishment of our peace was upon him. He paid for it by his blood. And in Isaiah 54, 10, God has made a covenant of peace with you. So it comes from God. It comes in your redemption. And then we said it comes by abiding in God's presence. Spend time with God. God was really hammering this spend time with God. And I want to say it again to you. Take time, spend time with God, get in his presence. And then third, it comes by and through the word of God, the promises of God give and bring peace. And especially Romans 10, 17, when you get that rhema word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word word is the Greek word rhema. And it is interpreted, spoken, revealed word. It's when you read the Bible and the word comes alive to you, when you read the Bible and it jumps out at you when you read the Bible and a scripture speaks to your heart. It speaks to you. That spoken word is the rhema word. And it is by that rhema word that you do your warfare. You do war with that rhema word. When God speaks a word to your heart, it's a scripture promise and it speaks to you. It comes alive. Then you take that word and Ephesians six verse 17. The next verse after what we read, the shield of faith is verse 16 with which you extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. Verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you realize that that sword is the only offensive weapon? The others are all defensive armor. They're the armor to protect you. God gave you this one as your offensive weapon. It's a sword. 
And you take that sword, you take that spoken word of God to your heart and you do war with it. You speak it out loud against the devil by saying to the devil, Satan, listen up. God's word says by his stripes, I was healed. God's word says he sent forth his word and healed me. God's word says he carried my sickness and bore my diseases. God's word says he meets all my needs and supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. And God's word says those who fear him lack nothing. And God's word says that my cup runneth over. And God's word says all my children are taught by the Lord and great is my children's peace. And God's word says, and God's word says, and God's word says, that's exactly what Jesus did in the wilderness of temptation. Matthew four and Luke four, when Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights, how did he answer the devil? He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus overcame the devil. And so can you. Jesus, before he went to the cross, overcame the devil. And so can you. And he was showing you how to do it by saying it is written. By using the word of God, speaking it out loud against the enemy and saying it as often as you need to, because the devil comes to you in your thoughts to torment you day and night if he can. But you must resist and oppose him by speaking the word of God more than he speaks the lie. So you speak the word of God out loud. You, you should write down even on paper those scriptures God has given to you to do war with. You write them down and you read them all day long. And if you can, you memorize them and you quote them so that while you're driving, you quote them out loud. You speak them out loud while you're at work and you walk down the hall. You speak those scriptures while you're getting ready in the morning. You speak those scriptures while you're getting ready for bed at night. You speak those scriptures, you speak them, you speak them, you speak them. And by those scriptures, you will do war. And by those scriptures, you will overcome. You will overcome all the attacks of the evil one and you will get your victory and God's word will come to pass and be fulfilled in your life. Glory. Hallelujah. Now I'm out of time. Join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.